Hey guys, Jet 888 here. It is August 24th. It's a Saturday. I'm just down the hill doing some trimming. But since I haven't been here um, and updated for a while, I just wanted to give a quick update. Um, having to deal with that workplace violence restraining order that uh, Rochelle Farley from the Sunnyside Saddle Club in Chula Vista, actually Bonita, but um, Chula Vista and then the San Diego County put out. It literally took under 10 minutes and only under 10 minutes because um, Rochelle Farley was arguing with the the judge, whoever she was. She was she was good though. She knew the law, but um, she basically sat there. You know, once you get into court, you don't have to say anything because you've already put in all your arguments and all your facts and all of your evidence, so you don't have to say anything. So I just sat there and listened, and um, Rochelle Farley started calling us criminals and saying um, that we vandalized and burglarized the arena, which is an outdoor facility in a public park. <laughs> and it's not like it's in a building, but um, anyhow, so now I'm going to have to deal with the whole being labeled a criminal, um, which is fine. We'll deal with that. But um, I'm going to, my next step is I'm going to seek an injunction for the locks to be removed, which I've been asking for over 500 and probably going on 504 days now. That the city officials, the agents for Chula Vista, a smart city, have allowed to be adhered to a public park facility which was an arena that has been used for 41 years by the community and for some reason this nonprofit organization doesn't get the fact that you can't just lock out the people not without compensation and not without like facilities or comparable lands which is a lot of the resource codes, California resource codes 5400 through 5409 states that very specifically, as does the Chula Vista Municipal Codes. It's um, 2.66.010. And what I found was kind of funny is in Rochelle's little argument about her um, or her claim was that all I did was spewed codes. It was kind of funny because when we got into the courtroom, the judge asked her, are you sure you want to proceed with this uh, workplace violence accusation or claim? And she said, absolutely, or yes, you know. So the judge said, well, let me read to you what workplace violence, the definition of that is. So she read the, the I guess, the definition to workplace violence. So it was kind of funny to me because um, where I was being accused of spewing codes, that's one of the first things that the judge did to uh, Rochelle Farley was spewed some more definitions and codes. And I think that's funny because if you're dealing with these corporations, that's all they are is, you know, agreements or contracts and codes and stuff like that. It's all for them. It's not for us. It's not for the people. It's for them. So anyhow, I just um, walked out of there because the whole case was denied. The case was seen, but it was closed as being denied so that's good it's a win in my books and um but when Rochelle and her little entourage who walked out of the courtroom about I don't know 10 minutes later maybe she walked out saying we're not finished yet and so I think that's kind of interesting so you know they're going to try to get me any way they can and what's interesting is this this uh workplace violence claim was filed I think it was about four days after I submitted a demand letter to the city officials and to the park rangers and everyone who had an um, involvement with allowing this agreement to be, um, I don't know, what's it called, violated because the agreement itself isn't necessarily bad. It's um, because it states in the agreement that they have to adhere to all laws, codes, and all that stuff. It's the locking of the facility that I have a problem with. And it's the, um, what's it called, deliberate indifference of the city officials who did nothing. And so 
about the day after I submitted this demand letter to all parties involved, uh, Rochelle Farley texts the park supervisor, Danny Shrek, she texts him and says, I'm going to take out a restraining order for the Jets. And he writes, good, or very good, or something like that. Good. Not That wasn't um, an unbiased comment, I don't think, but because he was also in named in the demand letter. So it's interesting how they allow her to be their little attack dog um, and just sit on their hands while she violates the public land rights or public access rights and what's even I think more interesting is in her little entourage was one of the civic center she was the president of the civic center it's the Sweetwater Valley Civic Association which a civic center is specifically to keep public access open to the public and yet this president she um, during the city council meeting on October 17th she approved, she verbally approved um, that the agreement between Sunnyside Saddle Club and the city of um, Chula Vista, which is fine, I guess, that's fine, she approved it, but when I contacted the Civic Center to tell them, hey, the gates are being locked for this public facility that people have accessed and used for 41 years, you know, can you do something about that? Um, there's no comment. Nothing. And what's also interesting is that Judy Tiber, the president of the Sweetwater Valley Civic Center, she also happens to own the, or her husband, I don't know who, but they're married, so um, she and her husband own the equestrian center, which is the boarding facility that all the, most all the, um, the Sunnyside Saddle Club members belong to. So it's a funny little tight circle and also uh, Judy Tiber, the president of the Civic Center in Benita, she also happens to be on the San Diego County Planning uh, Department. I guess it's a volunteer thing, but she's part of the planning department too. So she's got her little hooks everywhere and I find that's kind of interesting. But she was in, you know, in their supporting Sunnyside Saddle Club and um, this, the Civic Center is also the sponsor for Sunnyside Saddle Club who locks a public facility, which is not what the Civic Center is supposed to support. So anyhow, that was my latest um, little dealio that I was having to, to work around and try to learn. I'm learning a lot, so it's kind of exciting. But, um, so my next thing is to put a request for injunctive relief to remove the locks from the public park arena because, um, even according to Rochelle Farley, the president of Sunnyside Saddle Club, we call it SSC for short, she even admits in part of her argument, she states that at, for 41 years, there's never been an incident regarding the arena or the people, which I'm one of the people who allow my horses to run around and I've had seven horses running around in the arena <laughs> and never ever have had an incident um, no safety issues it hasn't destroyed the arena or the footing she even during the um, the court thing with the judge she goes but they're destroying my footing they're vandalizing my soil it's like oh my god she started crying um, literally which I found was kind of funny I mean, I kind of felt sad for it, but it was like, it's kind of pathetic. But, you know, you still public land and you get some kickback or not kickback, what feedback from it. And of course, when you do harm to people, they're going to respond. If you don't respond, then you basically just gave your consent. So I can't remember what I was just saying earlier, but um, anyhow, then the 41 years of never having an incident or a problem or an issue and now suddenly they want to lock the facility and that was one of my other arguments was um it was like I guess it's called an estoppel I don't hopefully I'm saying it correctly but an estoppel is when an official it has to be someone in the, the official capacity to do so but when they basically give you um, 
an assurance or a promise basically stating that the arena is for public use or the arena will remain open to the public that's what you call an estoppel agreement or estoppel so um, it's kind of like a promise and they can't the government can't just take it away from you and I had four instances where you know I was basically led to believe that this land would be open to the public and so one was a newspaper article that one of the city deputy city managers mentioned that the arenas will remain open to the public. I also have, let's say, a conversation on May 9th with Danny Shrek, the park supervisor, who the one that said good when Rochelle Farley said she's going to put out a restraining order on it, on me. Um, but he he told me that on May 9th he said that the um, the club, Sunnyside Saddle Club, would not lock the facility anymore in, unless it's the day before their little events. He called it their elevated events, which was just such a joke because their elevated events consisted of competition amongst themselves. Um, you know, it's just, it was kind of pathetic. But they had to close, well, let me keep on with this stopple. So it was the promise with the park supervisor Danny Shrek that the locks would remain um, off or the arena will remain open to the public oh, we have a nice breeze my little banana plants up there that's a palm a date palm right there um, so you have the agreement in the papers by the city manager I've got the verbal agreement by the park supervisor um, what there's one contract a contract on July 14th 2020 which was the last contract that Sunnyside Saddle Club had with Chula Vista it stated that the city desires for the um, activities which are the equestrian activities to remain open and available to the residents that's another one let's see what was my other the other agreement I don't remember now but in the newspaper article I think I already said that there there were four agreements that led me to believe that that arena would be open. So, and also what you have is the latches, um, I guess the latches arguments, it's L-A-C-H-E-S, and that's basically stating that, you know, here's Sunnyside Saddle Club suddenly demanding that this is their competition arena and, and that the footing needs to be pristine and protected. And um, so they're going to lock it. Well. After these 41 years, they're just now saying this. They've never ever had trespassing notices. No park rangers have ever kicked anybody out for turning their horses loose. There's never been locks on the gates before. So because of the delay of time to suddenly try to claim this arena as yours, which it's not because it's on the public park facility and it's been used by people, um, it's, that's an, a latches argument so that that helps um, my case or argument that this arena has always been open and available to the public which is what Rochelle is saying it never has been and so that can't be proven because I have so many photographs and every time I went to the arena not every time but a lot of times I went to the arena so Anyhow, you know, when they try to take people's land and their right to access it, and they try to call it theirs and privatize it, you know, it's time to stand up. So hopefully more people are calling out these nonprofits who are stepping on the public's toes. It's ridiculous. Oh, and the fact, too, that they got um, a $25,000 grant a neighborhood reinvestment grant and in the agreement the October 17th agreement it basically stated that um, Nora Vargas she's the county San Diego County supervisor she gave them twenty five thousand dollars for a neighborhood reinvestment grant and you can't take that money grant money and close the public out you just can't do that so Anyhow, um, but that's what I've been doing lately and today I just decided I needed to get down the hill and trim some trees and um, enjoy the shade and the sunny day. It's kind of warm out today, but we don't have the humidity like a lot of you guys do. So, 
All right, well, there's the update. Horses are fine. I'm going to have to trim their feet. They're getting all fat, and they're really bored because they can't just get out and run. So the um, fight continues. Anyhow, hope you guys are good, and uh, let's see if I can tell you, think of anything else. Nope. Anyhow. <laughs> oh, and I put in lots and lots of public records, too. I requested super lot of public records because to me it seems like these people have conspired quite a bit and are working together especially after seeing that text and um, some other text messages and Rochelle Farley has also literally videotapes herself so I'm changing the hose around here literally tapes herself tearing down messages that I have placed on a public message board so I just took this big one down that these, this one was on the building. This one was on the, which they shouldn't be putting anything on our private building. And then this big one they had over here, but then I'm like looking, I'm like, Oh, Oh, there's more. Okay. So here's another one lies. Here's another one lies. Let's see where else, what else do we have? Oh, Oh, look, there's another one lies. What else do we have here? Uh, looks like, looks like that's all of them. I guess I should start looking in more places. I guess that's it. In the park. It's a public message board. And she, as she's tearing off these notices that, that literally just state that the um, arena has been locked to the public. And if you have anything to say about it, I gave the name to the city manager and the district one um, I think the council person for district one so she's sitting there tearing off public notices on a public message board so there's another huge violation of um, the people's rights to communicate okay guys you be good isn't that kind of a cool old truck down there whoa that's, that means it's time to go, I guess. <laughs> I don't know why that alarm just went off. It's for the um, any ground squirrels, I guess. It doesn't work, though. Okay, be good, guys. Bye.